All right, guys. So today I want to talk about one of the projects that is solving the similar problem that Render is solving, but this project is actually under a hundred million dollar market cap. As of moment of the recording of this video, I think it's about seventy million dollars in market cap. So I think, in my opinion, personally, if there is room to grow, and if the Render is now sitting at, let's take a look, at position thirty nine and at two point eight billion dollars in market cap, this project is called Clore AI, is sitting right now at about 70 fully diluted. And this total supply here is not the accurate number. We're going to go over the accurate number because there is a uh, minting rewards and those rewards are going to be minted over almost 20 years. So you don't have to worry about inflation as much, but still there is some inflation for you to know because Inflation is not something that I personally like. So let's talk about the problem that this project is trying to solve and also the solution. And since I already mentioned render, you probably have an idea what it is about. So basically it's trying to solve the computational power problem because we have growing number of AI projects that is skyrocketing and also machine learning associated with that as well as we have the need for 3D rendering. And if you take a look at their website, that's what they say, that it's distributed supercomputer that fits your needs and you can access GPU computing nodes from community members all around the world. So it is powered by its own blockchain that runs on the Kapow consensus algorithm, which is a type of proof of work algorithm. The reason being is that it protects the network against ASICs miners Instead, miners need to use consumer grade GPUs. So you won't be able to use an ASIC miner to mine uh, Clor token. Instead, you have to use regular consumer GPU. And I think this is a good uh, sign because they try to make it more publicly available and more decentralized that way. Now, usually I would take a look at the white paper, but they don't have a white paper per se. They have like a little paper about the proof of holding that basically describes the way Clore token is used and what are the benefits of holding Clore token. Also, they have a small overview of the project. So let's go ahead and, and go over the project first. So here's kind of a white paper of project overview where we go over again the problem. So the problem is inaccessible GPU power and current GPU leasing markets make accessible computing power difficult for individual users and team, prohibitive costs, technical complexity, lack of transparency and security risk created barriers to leverage GPUs. So what you can use it for is AI and machine learning, 3D rendering, as I already mentioned, cryptocurrency mining and simulation and modeling. So as a wide range of application, and the demand is going to only go up, in my opinion, in the future years. And so Glory AI provides the marketplace where users like you and I can easily rent out our GPUs, our computing power, to whoever needs this computing power. So what is proof of holding exactly if it runs on the basically cap how consensus mechanism? Proof of holding is just a concept when they introduce the Glory token so this concept basically means that if you hold Clore coin you get certain benefits and we're going to go over the benefits in order for you to be added to this proof of holding you have to verify the ownership and the ownership is verified very simple all you have to do is sign a transaction you can go over this paper and it'll show you how to sign that transaction so before we start talking about client benefits let's talk about what used to be the methods of payments before Clore coin was introduced because Clore coin was introduced later on to facilitate the payments but initially they started off accepting bitcoin and later on they were accepting fiat currency and only after that they came up with the Clore coin in order to First of all, facilitate the payments, then to reduce the fees, because when they would accept payments in Bitcoin, there would be huge fees associated with it. As you can see for on-demand fees, 10%, all the way up to 10%, and the spot fees all the way up to 2.5%. And if you pay in USD, the processing fee would be all the way up to 19.5%. So this is a lot. So what Chloricoin does, it actually, if you hold it and you still want to pay in Bitcoin or USD, you'll be able to cut your fees up to 50%. That's what they do for you. But you can also use it to pay for uh, leasing the equipment. And also, in addition to discounts, Clore frequently rewards users with additional Clore coins if they participate in the 
proof of holding system. And in order for you to participate, all you need to do is hold some Chloracoin and sign the transaction. In July 2023, an airdrop added an extra 1.5% for every proof of holding user. Such airdrops will be regular occurrences, thereby providing proof of holder participants with a continuous stream of reward. But there are also benefits for hosting providers. So if you lease out your equipment, then you'll also be able to get extra rewards when they calculate your rewards for leasing out that equipment. And there is a whole rewarding chart over here that you can go over, but all we're trying to figure out is whether there is going to be a demand for Chloricoin, because as I've already mentioned, they accept other two payment methods. I mean, personally, I would prefer them not accepting other payment methods, but I understand why they're doing it. But nonetheless, there are advantages to holding Chloricoin, and here's also a quick overview what it does, I mean, we already talked about it, but you get increased rewards. If you hold them, you get service discounts. It is hassle-free, so there is no need to transfer it to a separate wallet. All you have to do is hold it in your own wallet. And by the way, we were talking about wallets. They have their own wallet, which is a Windows desktop application and a Linux application, I believe. Uh, so these two wallets are available their own wallets and you'll also be able to buy them on centralized exchange which we're going to talk about a little bit later there is no blocking of your funds so you always will be able to transfer them out or move them around if you wish and there's also no penalties and it's an optional participation so you don't have to participate but basically there is no downside to participating it's only benefits so let's talk about tokenomics because this is important when we take a look at the any project so first of all the Chloricoin facilitates payment on the platform, as we already mentioned. And second, it earns rewards for holding. So these are the two main functions of the Chloricoin. Now, the max supply is going to be 1.3 billion coins. And if you go on CoinMarketCap, you'll see that total supply is mentioned as 300 million, which is not correct. They don't have the up-to-date information. I think CoinGecko doesn't have it either. So if you want to find the supply, I suggest that you join their Telegram group and over there they'll be able to provide you actually this uh, chart that you see. I believe I picked it up from their Telegram uh, group. So as you can see, there's going to be 1.3 billion total coins that are going to be fully mined in 20 years. And mining is the only source of added supply. So currently we're sitting at around 300 million coins, which is about 23% of max supply at the moment. And it's going to be mined over the period of 20 years. Well, right now it's a little less, but the mining is going to end in 2042. Down here, you can also see the whole emission schedule. So right now we're going to be in December 2024. And there's going to be a total of 35% of the circulating supply mined. And they also have halving, kind of like Bitcoin halving, but it doesn't happen every four years. The mining is reduced with every block. And every block is one minute. So every minute, the mining rewards get smaller and smaller, which creates scarcity. So I don't see that it's going to be diluted very much. There is still some inflation there, but I think with this one, it's pretty sustainable. And if the demand is going to outpace that inflation, then we should be fine. And I do see that the demand is definitely going to outpace the inflation because the only competitors right now that I see are Render, which is really high right now and also a cash network somewhere but this one is a really like a low cap in my opinion like 70 million is nothing and i think this may very well be a 1 billion dollar market cap in the future maybe in the upcoming bull run but i i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it definitely has a 5 to 10x grow potential now speaking of the team i wasn't able to find any info on the team and speaking of the community they have 19.4 thousand followers. I think at the moment of recording of this video, they have even more and they post about two to three times a day. Telegram is pretty active. They have about 4.5 thousand followers. Discord community is not very active and it's mainly like technical question on how to set up mining. On YouTube, they have 375 subscribers and they only have three videos so far. So it's not that much, but it only means that if this project is going to take off, it's going to make you a lot of money and this is what we're here for we're here to make money so hopefully that's what's going to happen i couldn't find any info on advisors or partnerships and again in terms of market and competition i probably already mentioned but the market is huge like ai machine learning 
gaming, 3D rendering, it's all going to grow 100%. Like this world is turning digital and every day the demand is going to be high. Just look at NVIDIA, for example. NVIDIA stock surged so much and that's because there is a huge demand for these type of tasks right now because everybody's jumping on this train. So we might see momentum and this might take off actually. And the reason I believe it's not pumping yet it's because it's not on the most popular centralized exchanges that we're going to talk about in a minute. Now, let's take a look at how the team has been delivering. Well, if you look on their website, they have this roadmap and they pretty much delivered everything that they say. I haven't checked the latest stuff, but pretty much whatever they've been talking about here on the roadmap, they have delivered. You can go ahead and take a look at it. But what's upcoming? Let's take a look at what's upcoming. So the Clore storage will be introduced. Now, before I actually talk about this, let me mention that this company is actually registered in the European Union, in the Czech Republic. And this Clore storage is going to be part of the data center that they purchased somewhere. They purchased a data center. I don't know exactly where, but I know that they have their own data center. So in this term, you might be saying mm, they're not really decentralized. And they also offer you, you can do the either their data center, the enterprise grade data center, or you can do the decentralized way whichever fits your needs because when it is centralized there's most likely not going to be downtime or any issues so it's enterprise grade or you can go the decentralized and i think it's actually a good way because it's the best of both worlds because the chlor token is still going to be there and i believe it's just going to help them out i don't think it's going to affect it in any way or make it less decentralized because you they still have a marketplace for decentralized stuff it's just that they're adding this stuff and they're going to have Clore storage. So Clore storage is going to be in that data center. You'll be able to rent out containers on Clore AI. In Q2, they're planning to release Clore VPN. So potentially allowing Clore AI hosting providers to lease their network as a VPN service. And Clore OS will be released with the additional server monitor features like GPU, clock speeds, temperature, and load. So this is kind of cool. In Q3, they're planning to launch uh, a unified marketplace based on ClorOS and each server will have its designated role. And what is also they're saying, I don't know if this exactly means that they're going to drop Bitcoin and USD as a payment, but that all transactions will be made exclusively in ClorCoin. So that's actually good. Like again, I'm, I'm not against t taking payments in Bitcoin or USD because I think not many people will want to pay in Bitcoin because B Bitcoin probably eventually is going to be a store of value. But this one is probably a good sign because it might increase demand for Chlorcoin and the price is going to go up. So let me quickly go over the benefits of actually hosting equipment on Chlor AI. And one of them is that while your equipment is idle and not being leased, you'll be able to mint cryptocurrency. And you'll be able to mint Ergo, Radiant and Zilliqa that automatically gets converted into Clore coins. So when you mean this cryptocurrencies, they automatically get sold for Clore. And I think it's a good sign because it's going to increase the price of Clore because there's going to be more coins that are being purchased. So while you're sitting idle as a hosting provider, you'll be able to mint all this cryptocurrency. And you won't even have to worry about which one is more profitable at the moment because they have the automatic detection what is more profitable and they automatically switch but if you want to mint a certain coin you can also do that you don't have to do automatic way you can pass in the command line specific coin that you want to mint so where can you buy so currently clore is available on a few centralized exchanges so these are gate.io metc xt.com and bitget and there's a couple more that i'm less familiar with but this is pretty much where you can buy it you cannot buy it on coinbase you can buy it on crypto.com you can buy it on Binance. So that's why I think the price hasn't taken off yet as much as it would if it was listed. But I think it's a good sign. It's an opportunity for you if you believe in this project. Again, nothing that I say here is a financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just providing my own opinion what I think is going to happen. And personally, I like this project. So I think you can do 5 to 10x. I can probably see it going up to $600 million in the market cap. If not this bull run, maybe the next bull run. But I think if they continue to do in the work that they're doing, 
this is what's going to happen. Hey anyway, guys, I'm going to provide all the links to their website, to their blockchain explorer. By the way, quickly, let's take a look at their blockchain explorer. This is the blockchain explorer that they have. They used to have their own, but I think they switched to Cryptoscope. So you can see like current point in circulation. You can see how many blocks have been created so far, the address count, the transaction count. So you can find all that information here. You can set up your own wallet. So here they have the wallet. Let's take a look. Yep, they have the wallet for Windows, Linux. So you can click on it and it's going to download an execution file. So you're going to have to click on it and install your wallet. Or they also have a partner wallet, which is the Videolum app. You can use that one as well. Let's say if you buy it on uh, MaxC or Gate, you can transfer it to your old wallet. And quick Explore AI overview. It wasn't easy to find all this info. Some of it I found on Telegram. Some of it I found through Copilot, to be honest. But you can like go ahead and do the uh, check the overview paper and also proof of holding paper that describes all the benefits that you get to understand how it can create the demand for this coin. And also, if you want to go over mining, you can go over this article, which also was not easy to find. There is no links on their website but they still have it somewhere. So that was it guys. It was a quick review of this Chlor AI project. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It was helpful. Give it a thumbs up as well. Subscribe to my channel to see more stuff like this. I'm probably gonna go over more projects that I personally like. And I like this one because it's at a low market cap, but it's still a good utility project. And maybe the deep in sector is gonna take off. So you might see some crazy returns in the deep in sector. And this is what it is. It is a deep in because it uses the physical resources, everyday resources such as GPUs on the blockchain. So this is kind of cool. And I hope we're going to see a surge in this sector as well. And again, I personally like this project, but nothing in this video is a financial advice. Do your own research, make your own decisions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.